What's happening, guys? Thanks for coming back to the next episode of our Game Boy series. Before we start making music and creating sounds and all that, there's some kind of boring tool chain setup we have to do. So I just wanted to give a little preface to that. So the first step to creating any kind of program, what program do we want to create? We want to make something for the Game Boy, right? And the first step to creating any kind of program in general is to figure out what language are we going to talk to our target computer to. So in this case, this thing is a computer, even though it's a gaming console, it also is a computer. So how are we gonna talk to that thing? Well, I decided to use the C programming language because it's a widely used language for sound and music, and there's also support for it on the Game Boy Advance. So why not? It's, it's a good option, I think. And with this programming language, to create programs, we kind of write up these text files using that language, which are kind of, you could think of them as poems to the computer. And these are known as source code. We can read them, humans can read them. If I show it to somebody else and they understand the language that I'm using, they could read it as well. But the problem is source code computers, they can't read it. So source code is just the ingredients for our program. We still need to cook those ingredients somehow to get a final product, which the computer can understand. And that's where the second step comes in. We need to find the tool chain which can convert our beautiful poem of source code into a language the computer we are talking to, in this case, the Game Boy Advance, we need to convert it to something that that computer can understand and execute. So the tool chain I'm going to be using to kind of help with this is known as DevKit Pro. They have a whole branch called DevKit Arm that you can use, has a whole tool chain for the Game Boy Advance. And yeah, it's just, I found it to be really successful and yeah, that's what I'm going to be using, so, but you guys are free to find your own tool chain if needed. So in other words, at the end of the day, we want our tool chain to convert our source code into a .gba file, because that's the format that's run on your Game Boy. Your Game Boy, these, these game cartridges you might have are actually executable files written to what's inside of here, and that's how that works. So we need to get that file somehow and wait a minute, how do we actually copy that to the Game Boy? Well, that's a good question. How are we going to get this GBA file onto the Game Boy Advance? And that's step three. In this case, we have four options, two of which I'm going to be using in this series. Option one, the easiest, is to download a Game Boy Advance emulator which is something that I actually do before I even copy the game over to the Game Boy. But what an emulator is, is it's a program that kind of mimics how the Game Boy runs, and it can run on your computer, so you can run it if you're on Mac, Windows, or there's probably even some Linux and Game Boy emulators, I'm sure, out there. So basically, it's just a Game Boy on your computer and you can run the GBA file with that emulator. You can get Game Boy games too, which you should own them though. Don't be illegal and download games for free. Just make sure you're doing legal stuff, but you can still run the GBA files just like it's a Game Boy. And so that's the easiest option. Option two is to use a flash card, which is what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be using this guy, the Easy Flash, and I'll leave a tutorial in, embedded in this series on how to set that up on every platform. But flash cards are nice because this one, the Easy Flash, you can actually take a micro SD out of it. So I have a micro SD card. You copy the games or programs that you make onto there the GBA files, and then it actually, the whole SD card itself goes into this little cartridge, and that's the Easy Flash cartridge that goes directly into the, the Game Boy slot. So you can actually just play it like it's a Game Boy game. It works seamlessly, no problems at all. Um, 
And then option three would be to, to get a, what's called a linking cable. So with a linking cable, you can put that in this EXT port. It's kind of hard to read there, but it says EXT and that's where the linking cable goes in. And you can actually copy programs that way too if you have the, the appropriate software. But that only works with smaller programs is what I read online. So not full on games. I think it's a certain kilobytes that you can use to copy over. So it's more so for kind of debugging purposes maybe. I'm not sure, but I'm not gonna be covering that because I don't have a linking cable and the flash card is just a little bit easier for me. And lastly, if you feel the need to, to have a, an, a physical cartridge for your program, if it's that important that you know, maybe it is like, maybe it's, maybe you're making a game or something. I love, please send me a copy if you are, I'd love to play it, but you can actually get a, a physical cartridge, not, I mean, this is Pokemon. I'm just using it as an example, but for the Game Boy Color, for the Game Boy or the Game Boy Advance, they have like blank cartridges that look exactly how it is. And you can just write your program to it using, I don't even know what, but there's some tools out there you can use and you could do it that way too. But please send me your games or whatever you guys make. I'd love to see them. That'd be awesome if you, if you end up making some homebrew games off of this. But anyway, those are really the, the four options you have for, for setting all this stuff up. So that's about it for this for this preface. I'm actually going to, in the next three ep episodes, we're gonna be setting it up for each platform, setting up the tool chain and all that. And I'm gonna help you guys do that. So I'll see you guys in the next episodes. Peace.